Welcome to the next video in the Patterns in Nature topic. This video will be looking at the following two dot points, identify cell organelles seen with current light and electron microscopes, and then describe the relationship between the structure and fun of cell organelles and their function. So we're going to start off by having a look at a bit of background of what electron and light microscopes are before we go into have a look, having a look at what organelles can be seen under each. So starting off with the light microscope, the light microscope was invented in 1648 by a man named Zacharias Jansen. Now these are relatively cheap, they don't cost a great deal, you can even pick one up at Audi when they have one of their science special weeks. The ones that we use at school have a maximum magnification of about 400 times, where you can have others that will allow you to magnify things by 1000 to 2000 times. The images that we see through a light microscope are viewed in colour and will depend on the colour based on the stain that we use. We can look at specimens, whether they're alive or dead. Uh, obviously, with a specimen that is alive, if it's uh, quite large, we need to use a binocular microscope. However, um, we can create very thin slices of specimens to have a look at under our uh, stereo microscope, like the one that we use at school. Some advantages of light microscopes is, as I said, we can use stains to observe uptake by cells. So we can actually have a look at how the stain moves through the cells to see how substances move in and out. And also specimens can be um, observed in real time. So we could put a live organism underneath the microscope and have a look at what it is doing. Some disadvantages, however, though, uh, they are they do use quite a lower resolution than the electron microscope, so they're not as sharp and in focus. And because they're made from cheaper technology, they don't necessarily last as long, but you can buy some, you know, on the higher end uh, that are much better quality than, say, the ones that you would buy from Audi. The electron microscope was invented in the early 1930s by two scientists of, by the name of Noll and Ruska. They are extremely expensive and they take up quite a bit of room, uh, which we'll have a look at in the disadvantages. The massive advantage of electron microscopes is we can magnify things by up to 2 million times. Okay, so obviously that's going to allow us to look at all the different parts of the individual cells as well as a whole range of different types of cells. Images are viewed in black and white and they must be dead. Because of the way that uh, the electron microscope works, we need to have very, very thin specimens to have a look at. Some advantages, obviously, with having a magnification of up to 2 million times, we have much higher resolution. We're able to see the three-dimensional external shape of organisms and cells and it gives us a much greater depth of field. Some disadvantages, however, Sample preparation can be quite difficult. The sample must be dry and must not be moving, hence why it needs to be dead. They take up lots of space, so some electron microscopes can take up a whole room. And obviously, they are much, much more expensive than light microscopes, so therefore maintenance and repair costs are quite high. So what are organelles? So we've now looked at microscopes. Microscopes we can use to view organelles. What are organelles? So when we look at the word organelle, we think organs, well, organs are small parts of a whole system. So just like that, organelles are any of a number of organized or specialized structures within a living cell. So all of these things in these images here, the cell membrane, nucleus, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi body, mitochondria, they are all organelles that all have specialized jobs within either plant or animal cells. So here we have our electron microscope and our light microscope and we need to be able to identify organelles that can be viewed under each one of these. So starting off with our light microscope, we have our cell membrane, our nucleus, cytoplasm, nuclear membrane, the cell wall which can only be seen in plant cells, chloroplast which again can only be seen in plant cells and vacuoles. Then with our electron microscope, we have ribosomes, the mitochondria, which is the site of cellular respiration, the nucleolus, which is the part of the nucleus that we can see under the uh, electron micrographs, the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi body, the lysosomes, and the centrioles. 
So we need to be able to identify those that can be seen under each. And as we move through, we're going to be having a look at the function of some of these as well, or actually all of them as we go through. So the syllabus dot point says that we need to be able to describe the relationship between the structure and function of some of these organelles. Okay, so some organelles have a very defined structure, which helps them to maintain their function. So in particular, the nucleus. So the function of the nucleus is to contain the genetic information, which helps to control the development and functioning of the whole cell. So basically, we can say that the nucleus is the brains behind the cell. It tells all the other parts what to do. So how does its structure relate to its function? So the nucleus has large pores in its membrane that allows molecules such as the genetic information, so our DNA, our RNA, or proteins to move in and out and then travel to different parts of the cell in order to carry out different jobs. The mitochondria, this is where cellular respiration takes place. So the oxygen and glucose react to form carbon dioxide, water and energy in the form of ATP. And basically their job is to provide the organism with the energy it needs to carry out its everyday functions. So how does its structure relate to its function? So the inner membrane of our mitochondria is very folded as we can see here, okay? Uh, this helps to increase the surface area, which obviously increases the space available for reactions to take place, which leads to more energy being created for the cell. Next, we have our endoplasmic reticulum. So we have two types of endoplasmic reticulum being rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. As a whole, the endoplasmic reticulum provide an internal surface for many chemical reactions in the cell and provides a series of channels for materials to be moved around. The endoplasmic reticulum, as we can see here, have these tiny little spots on the surface, which are known as ribosomes, which on their own are another organelle, but they can be attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. And it's their job to undergo protein synthesis, so to create proteins. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum has no ribosomes and is involved in lipid manufacture, so the production of fats and oils, and the inactivation of drugs. So the structure is composed of many folded membranes again, as we can see many, many layers, which also helps to increase the surface area, again, providing a surface for many reactions to take place at the same time. And lastly, we have chloroplasts. So these ones are only found in plant cells as they are the site of photosynthesis. So as we know from photosynthesis already, uh, the plant takes in water and carbon dioxide from the air and produces glucose and sugar. So the structure, there are many layered membranes which contain the pigment chlorophyll, which we know is essential for photosynthesis to take place. And the many layered membranes increase the surface area, again, just providing heaps of room for photosynthesis to take place. And obviously, if we have more space for more reactions to take place, then we have a greater amount of sugar produced. So basically, by having a look at those, uh, or the last three in particular, the mitochondria, the endoplasmic reticulum, and the chloroplast, by having many layers or folds, we increase the surface area, and that really just helps those organelles to carry out the uh, reactions that they need to do at a much quicker rate in order to make sure that the cell is provided with all the nutrients, chemicals, etc., that they require. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you.